Welcome to the 14th lecture of Advanced Calculus course. In this lecture, we will learn how to differentiate inverse functions. As we have learned in uh, as we learned in the previous lectures, inverse functions are functions that satisfy the following equations. For function f, the inverse function g is the function that satisfies the following equations. g of f of x equals f of g of x. And that is always equal to x. If g satisfies uh, this condition, then g is the inverse function of f. Now, how do we differentiate inverse functions? Now, let's say f from a interval a to b to c to d is a increasing onto function, meaning that it is a bijective function. And this function is differentiable at a certain point, x0, which is a uh, element of uh, element in the domain of, of f. f is differentiable at x0. And its differentiated value is not equal to zero. Then f has a inverse function from c to d to a to b, which is differentiable. at y0, which is equal to f of x0. And then this differentiated value, g of g prime of y0 equals 1 over f prime of x0. This is the conclusion we want to prove. So what this means is that if you draw a line like this from a to b to c to d and f is a function increasing onto function like this and then it should not have any point uh, and the points we are talking about should not be and uh, should not have a, a slope of the tangent line zero because in that case for example oops sorry so in that case Uh, the slope of the slope of the uh, tangent line for the inverse function will be undefined. So in this case, uh, this uh, discussion is invalid. So, so therefore, we need this condition: the differential value of f at x naught should not equal zero. And the conclusion is that the differentiated value of g, uh, g at y0 is equal to the reciprocal of, of the differentiated value of f at x0. So therefore, the, um, this statement is what we want to prove in this lecture. Now then, how do we prove this statement? Before we just go on to prove this statement, we first need to prove a certain uh, lemma. That is, let's say a function h defined on a certain open interval has a limit l at a certain point in its domain. And uh, its value never equals zero. Then the conclusion is so. So what we're uh, assuming is that the limit as x goes to x approaches x naught, the limit of h x equals l. And what we want to show is that the limit of the reciprocal of 
h of x as x approaches x naught is equal to the reciprocal of L. So before we prove, prove the statement of, uh, about our inverse function, we first need to prove this statement. We will, use, we will use this concept in proof of this statement. So first, let's prove the statement here. Uh, well, of course, this should not be zero as well. So, uh, to prove this statement, what we have to prove from, from the definition of limit, we have to prove that for any epsilon, for any positive epsilon, there exists a certain delta, corresponding delta, positive delta, such that the fact that x is close to x naught by a distance greater than zero and less than delta guarantees that the function values approaches the value we want by a distance less than the given epsilon. So we need to find such delta. In other words, we need to prove that this value, which is exactly equal to this value, is less than epsilon. So how do we do this? Now since we know a lot about this value from the fact that h approaches l as x approaches x naught, we need to deal with the denominator, this weird value, 1 over hx times uh, l. So we want this value to be smaller than a certain value. So we want this form. A form like this. So let's try to do this. First, from the fact that h approaches l, we know that there, for a given epsilon, for a given any given epsilon, there exists a certain corresponding delta one, a positive number delta one, such that the fact that x is close to x naught by a distance less than delta one guarantees the fact that h of x minus L, the absolute value of that uh, is less than the absolute value of L over 2, which is a certain positive number. So, so since we could find such, uh, we could find delta for any epsilon, we could find uh, such delta delta 1 for for absolute value of L over 2, which is another positive number. So we can find delta for any epsilon. So there is a delta 1 corresponding to this positive number. And we denote that delta delta 1. So by the triangle inequality, we know that this is greater than or equal to the absolute value of L minus the absolute value of h of x. So, moving this term to the right side and moving this term to the left side, we get that the absolute value of L over 2 is less than the absolute value of h of x. So this is the type of the, this is the form that we wanted to search because of uh, this part. So multiplying each side by uh, absolute value of L, we earn that uh, uh, we earn this inequality and by taking reciprocals in uh, for both sides, we earn 
that whenever x is close to x naught by a distance less than delta 1, the value 1 over absolute value of hx times uh, the absolute value of l is less than is less than the reciprocal of absolute value of l squared time uh, l squared over 2 so whenever delta delta here is less than or equal to delta 1 so that this value is less than delta 1 we could know that this value here is less than the product of hx minus l, the absolute value of that, times 2 over the absolute value of l squared. Because the reciprocal of, uh, because the denominator this part, this part here is less less than this value whenever uh, x is close to x naught by a distance less than delta. And we want this to be less than epsilon. So we use the uh, we use the fact that h approaches l as x approaches x naught again. So this time for a certain positive number epsilon where epsilon is the epsilon given in this statement, epsilon over 2 times L squared. Let delta 2 be the delta such that whenever, whenever uh, x is close to x naught by distance less than delta 2, we earn that h is close to l by distance less than epsilon over 2 times l squared. And we could find such delta 2 because h approaches l. And we're using, the fa uh, we're using that limit in this statement. So whenever delta is less than delta 2, we can know that this value here is less than this value. And therefore, the product of this value, which is less than this value, times uh, 2 over uh, absolute value of L squared, which is exactly the reciprocal of this value, uh, we will earn that this whole, uh, this whole term here, which is equal to this term, uh, uh, which is greater than this term, is less than epsilon. So we will earn this fact. So just by defining delta as the minimum of delta 1 and delta 2. This is a convenient part of delta. You could define it as small as you want it to be. Uh, defining delta like this will guarantee that delta is less than or equal to delta 1 and delta 2. And therefore, this value here will be less than this, this value by the statement of the, about delta 1. And this will be less than epsilon by the statement of delta 2. And therefore, this is the delta we want. And we have proven that the, uh, that the reciprocal of h also has a limit, which is equal to the reciprocal of the original limit here, as x approaches x naught. And therefore, we have proven this statement written in red font. Now, let's go back to our original statement. about the differentiability of the inverse functions. Now, proof. Now let's first define a function h, a function about y, which is defined as following. f of g of y minus f of x naught over x minus x naught. No, not x here. It should be g of y minus x naught because h is a function of a y. And 
this is defined on the points in the domain of G except at the point we're discussing except at Y not so HY is defined like this and also uh, if you if you look at this uh, equation you can see that the reciprocal of h of y is equal to g of y is equal to uh, uh, no x naught is equal to g of y naught so this is equal to g of y minus g of y naught over y minus y naught Also, taking the reciprocal is valid because uh, H does not include Y naught as its uh, domain. And also because F is an increasing function, and in the case when X is not equal to X naught, we could say that this value is never equal to zero. So taking the reciprocal on each side is very valid. Now, notice that the limits of h of y as y approaches y naught is equal to f prime of x naught which is not equal to zero because g is a continuous function uh, g is continuous at y naught because it is differentiable at y naught and and using uh, the continuity of both g and the different differentiability of f we could conclude that this whole value will converge to uh, f prime of x naught as y approaches y naught. This will require a this will require a discussion about the continuity of g at y naught and the differentiability differentiability of f, each with its own epsilon delta discussion and I will leave as an exercise for you to prove this so try to prove that the limit of h of y as y approaches y naught equals the uh, differentiated value of f at the point x naught then the conclusion is by the previous uh, by our previous lemma which is written about here in red font the conclusion is that the reciprocal, which is exactly th the limit of this value, the the uh, quotient, the quotient in the discussion of differentiability of G, approaches the reciprocal of f prime of x naught as desired. So by proving this part and using the lemma that we have proven we obtain the we obtain the result we need and this I'll leave as an exercise so so we have proven that a differentiable uh, a inverse function of a differential function is also differentiable and its difference uh, and its differentiated value is equal to the reciprocal of the differentiated value of the original function this is the end of this lecture and the next lecture we'll learn about the mean value theorem MVT which will be the last topic in our discussion of dif differentiation in our advanced calculus course and overall in our course so the next lecture will be the last lecture of our course and see you in the next lecture